In The Godfather, we meet the notorious Don Vito Corleone, the head of the most powerful mafia family in the country. At this time, the mafia was at its peak and were generating billions of dollars. In New York, there were specifically five families who had complete control over the city and ruled with an iron fist, carving up a piece for each of the bosses. These bosses would set up fronts to hide their true activities with everything from operating Wall Street investment firms, restaurants, hotels to olive oil companies. The five families in the film were, the Corleone family headed by Vito Corleone, the Barzini family headed by Emilio Barzini, the Cuneo crime family founded by Carmine Cuneo, the Stracci family headed by Anthony Stracci, and lastly the Tattaglia family headed by Philip Tattaglia. The five families all have a fascinating backstory, amazingly crafted by Mario Puzo, in which he based on the real five crime families of New York. Even though we don't see them except in the meeting scene, they all have an intriguing and rich backstory that you will definitely want to know about. So in this video, we will uncover the fascinating backstories and hidden details about the immensely powerful five families of New York. around the old timers dreamed of how the family should be organized uh, based on the old Roman legions and call them machines the capitals and soldiers and it worked the commission was established to be the ruling body of the mafia in the united states it was to be used as an effective way to negotiate and coordinate different aspects of the criminal underworld it was where the heads of the criminal organizations throughout the country would meet to settle their differences in order to avoid any unnecessary hostilities. Its main aim was to ensure that the families could all operate their businesses at the same time, maximizing their profits, and even helping each other prosper in some cases. The commission was actually established by Vito Corleone. He managed to do this during a period known as the pacification of New York. Don Emilio Barzini was the head and founder of the Barzini crime family, one of, if not the most powerful family in the criminal underworld, almost equal to the Corleone family. In the early days, Barzini was one of Don Giuseppe Mariposa's top capos. However, his ambition and his former Don's actions made him become more disgruntled at his current position. After Mariposa went to war with Vito Corleone, Barzini was sent to assassinate Vito at a parade. However, Vito was extremely lucky and managed to survive that attack. But Vito's retaliation was so swift and lethal, Barzini knew if he was to remain in power or better yet take over, he would need to align himself away from his former powerful Don and accept the new shift of power. In addition to the fact Mariposa killed his close friend, Barzini betrayed Mariposa and took over the organization and renamed it as the Barzini crime family. Barzini was definitely one of the most cunning and intelligent bosses, second to only Vito. His progressive attitude towards business and lack of belief in what he considers as outdated ideals of loyalty, discipline, chivalry, or even honor, all made him focus on one thing, his profits. Which is why it frustrates him that some of the other Dons still believe in these principles and hold on to their traditions, which in his eyes, restrict them from maximizing their potential profits and therefore power. Barzini was a very eloquent and charismatic man who carried himself as a very courteous and gentleman-like figure. However hidden very well behind all the witty remarks and socializing was his true nature of treachery and ruthlessness. Unlike Tatalia, who was more brazen and always reacted more barbarically, Barzini was calculated, he was a strategist, resorting to more prudent and Machiavellian tactics. The Barzini crime family had interests in various markets including narcotics, gambling and prostitution, and was also shrewd enough to be interested in Las Vegas and Cuba from very early on. Barzini was also linked to Wall Street and the Mafia in Sicily. Come on, Cuneo, from the Bronx. The Cuneo crime family was founded by Don Carmine Cuneo. In the 1920s, he began a bootlegging operation out of the Bronx and upstate New York. Known as one of the few Dons whose criminal activities had never been suspected by the police, Don Cuneo ran a fleet of milk trucks from the Bronx as a front for his illegal activities. This earned him the nickname the Milkman. 
He also controlled all the upstate gambling and exercised executive power on state licensing of racing tracks. The Cuneo crime family was based on the Lucchese family, or could be based on the Megadino crime family from Buffalo, which also ran upstate New York and had close ties to the New York families. From Staten Island, we have with us uh, Victor Stracci. The Stracci crime family was founded by Don Anthony Stracci, alongside his brother Victor and Mario, in the late 1920s. Based in Staten Island, they however primarily controlled most of New Jersey. They had set up a legitimate business front in New Jersey, all the while pulling the strings and gradually gaining influence in New York City. In the film, the Don that was present at the meeting was Victor Stracci. In terms of business, the Stracci family had a fleet of freight hauling trucks. Since they had a lot of political influence, they were able to bypass various laws. One of which was that they were able to have their trucks travel overloaded, which damaged the highways. Due to Don Stracci's old-fashioned nature, they had little involvement in prostitution, but due to their control of the docks in New Jersey and Manhattan, they had an important role in the distribution of narcotics. Philip Tatalia was the head and the founder of the Tatalia crime family, one of the five major families of New York, like many of their contemporaries, the Tatalias were bootleggers during Prohibition. But with the repeal of Prohibition, their main business became prostitution, earning Don Tatalia a reputation as a pimp and causing the family to be held in low regard. They controlled most of the nightclubs in the United States, and they also began expanding into working in narcotics sometime in the 1930s, after being introduced to Virgil Salazzo. Philip Tatalia did not possess the same traits or even the same level of strategic prowess that all the other Dons possessed, as he mostly indulged himself in other activities. However he compensated his lack of intelligence by surrounding himself by far more capable and strong leaders, primarily his two sons Bruno and John. Although early somewhat liked and respected, but as his power grew, his greed and unpleasant traits became unbearable by the other Dons. Particularly the fact he didn't share their strong values and respect for the Mafia code. Out of the five Dons, Tatalia was seen as the weakest, because of his heavy reliance on others. Whether it was his constant need of Don Barzini's approval and backing, to him needing his sons to do most of the work for him. This does not mean that Tatalia was a complete moron, he did indeed manage to become one of the five major bosses of New York, an achievement that not many ever managed to conquer. Therefore, even with his lack of strategic prowess in comparison to the other Dons, Tatalia still found a way to survive amongst them. Anthony Molinari was the Don of the San Francisco crime family and a longtime ally of the Corleone family. One of the youngest Dons on the commission, Molinari was closely affiliated with neighboring Don Frank Falcone from Los Angeles. He operated off the waterfronts of San Francisco. Molinari was a friend and ally of Vito Corleone and was one of his guests at the wedding of his daughter Connie. Anthony Molinari was one of the very few Dons that, during the Five Families War, actually had supported the Corleone family. It was under his protection that Don Corleone's son Fredo was sent to the West Coast, helping him learn the casino business. This move was taken on by Mo Green, who enjoyed the extra financing it gave him. Molinari had long been a good friend to Don Corleone since the formation of the commission. That's an infamia. Giuseppe Zalucci was the head of Detroit's Zalucci family. The Zalucci crime family is a criminal organization in Detroit that was formed by Joseph Zalucci in the 1930s. They had a reputation for being one of the most peaceful families on the commission, and their Don was widely liked by all members of the organization, including Vito Corleone, who was a long-term ally. The Zalucci family owned one of the horse racing tracks in Detroit and pretty much owned many other gambling businesses. In the 1940s, when drug trafficking was becoming more widespread across the United States, Don Joe initially refused to yield, but eventually realized the least he could do was to ensure moderation and reach some sort of agreement. I want to control it as a business, to keep it respectable. 